Hello, welcome to Knowledge Graphs, week four, ontologies as key to knowledge representation. I am Mahsa Wafai and in the first hands-on of this week, I will show you how you can design your own ontology, how you can create classes and relations for your own ontology, and how you can visualize the created ontology so you can have a broader overview of your creation. Okay, so in order to create ontologies, we use ontology editor applications. There are many of these applications available. Some of them are, of course, free and open source. The most prominent free open source ontology editor is Protege. It is available both as an online version and as a desktop version. The um, online version of the Protege we will show you um, immediately after this, so you can see how you can get your hands on into creating an ontology for free in the web application. And we will move on to show you the desktop application, since the desktop application gives you more possibilities. There are also, of course, other commercial um, alternatives that you can use, for example, the Top Rate Composer, Fluent Editor, and you can even find more ontology editors in the W3 Wiki page, Ontology Editors. Okay, now let's have a look at the um, website of Protege, the web application. So here we go to the website, and of course here you can download um, Web Protege, but we want to use the online version and you have to create an account, sign in, and over here you can see all the projects that you have created. And uh, one nice thing about the Web Protege is that here you can work on an ontology collaboratively. If more than one person wants to work on the ontology, the web application makes it very easy. So the ontology we are going to work on is a pizza pasta ontology. It has, created, it has been created before, we just open this ontology, and okay, now here we have a few tabs. And um, of course, you have the classes, a tab for classes, a tab for properties, a tab for individuals, some comments. Here you can track your changes by entity, and here you can see a history of everything that you have done. Okay, let, now let's have a look at the classes we have. Um, of course, the top element here is shown with our thing, and everything in our universe goes under this top element. We have a class dish. Let's have a look at it. it this class has two subclasses, pasta dish, we have a pasta pizza ontology, and also pizzas. You can see in the window here some of the properties, some of the uh, relations that this class has with other classes. So for example, you can see that the parent of this class is the class dish. Now we have another class, ingredient, and in the class ingredient, we also have a few subclasses, dairy, meat, pasta type, pizza base, and vegetable. Now let's say we want to add one class, cheese, as a subclass of dairy. So in dairy we can have milk, we can have yogurt, different kind of dairy products, but we want to add one class cheese here. So you click on this um, circle with a plus here and by doing so you can create a new class and give it a name and that's it. That's how you can create a new class and you can see it appears here and already the parent is given in this window. And we have one more class organization under which we have restaurant as a subclass. Okay, let's have a look at the properties now. Under properties tab, you have three different um, tabs again, one for object properties, one for data type properties, and one for annotation properties. We have the top object property, as the top element here, and then below that, there is one property ingredient here. The property ingredient has a sub-property pizza base. Now, the property ingredient itself has dish as its domain and the class ingredient as, it, as its range. This means that for every dish, the dish has ingredient, ingredient. 
And if you look at pizza base, you can see the same um, kind of relation as well. So for domain pizza, the relation pizza base connects it to the class pizza base. Okay, now let's have a look at the data type properties. We have the data type property expiry date and the domain for expiry date is ingredient. Every ingredient has an expiry date and the range for this one is the um, XSD date time. Let's see how we can add another property. Again, we go to this create button here. Um, so for example, let's say we want to say how many calories per, per 100 gram is in a dish. We can create this property. Sorry, I didn't want this to make a sub property of expired date, so I can delete this by this button. Top data property, that is where I should click before creating a new property. So again, calories per 100 gram. It is created. Now I can define a domain for this property and that would be ingredient, for example. And the range for this property, the value that this um, property can take, this data type property can take, is a non-negative integer. Okay, it's as easy as that. Now let's have a look at some individuals that we have created for this ontology. Here we have different kinds of pizzas as individuals, we have different ingredients as, as individuals. So for example, we have four cheese, we have Napoli, we have margarita, but also as ingredients, individuals for ingredients, we have egg, we have flour. As an individual, let's have a look for um, pasta type, we have fossili. As an ingredient, as an individual for pizza base, we have flatbread and so on and so forth. And each of these individuals have their own um, specifications as well. So for example, four cheese as a type of pizza, this shows which class it belongs to. And it has ingredient mozzarella and it has ingredient yeasted dough. Now let's create a new individual and call it carbonara. Okay, so as you know, carbonara is a kind of pasta dish. And when I write PAS, then I already get offered the class names. Now I want to define what kind of ingredients this dish has. So with the object property ingredient, I can say that it has spaghetti as an ingredient. It has egg as an ingredient. And it also has pancetta, the Italian bacon, as an ingredient. And now we have our pasta carbonara. Okay, so that's basically um, all you can do with the web version of Protege. It has some limitations, so you cannot create very complex classes here. You cannot define complex relations. And you can also not create rules and do reasoning. That is why we also need desktop Protege to show you more of what is available with the web ontology language and um, in the realm of ontologies. Okay, now that we have created our ontology, we want to move it to the desktop version and we want to see what we can do over there. So what we need to do is we go back to home. Over here, we click on download and you can choose the download format. I'll choose Tertel here. And here you have the ontology. Okay, so now we have downloaded our ontology. We want to import it in the desktop version of Proteja. We just go to File 
and we open it from the drive it has been saved in. Yeah, so here you can see some information about this ontology in the desktop version. You can see the ontology prefixes that have been used over here. And you can do a lot more. One of the possibilities you have at the desktop version is through the help of plugins. There is a nice visualization plugin for the desktop protege, for example, called Vowel. And with the help of this plugin, you can get an overview of the ontology you have created. So you can see the different classes and circles here. You can see your um, properties, data type properties over here, expiry date, for example, and this one that has the strange name, but it is calories per gram. And you can have the relations. So for example, you can see here that dish is a subclass of pizza. And you can see that pasta dish, uh, sorry, that pizza is a subclass of dish and that pasta dish al is also a subclass of dish. And um, you can move these around so the um, view looks a bit better and more um, understandable. You can see organization and you can see restaurant as a subclass of org organization and so on and so forth. And over here, when you click on pause, layouting, everything will become static and you can use this um, visualization that you have from your ontology also to present it to others. Okay, I hope you enjoy using Web Protege and I hope you also get your hands onto the desktop Protege um, and Sasha will next tell you more about what you can do with desktop Protege.